Hey Junk Team, it's Brooke here. So I've heard that there are a few questions from you guys that you'd like to hear my opinion on. So let's get to the bottom of this. I have here how to reduce sugar consumption. What are some good carbohydrate substitutes? How to deal with sugar cravings? What are some healthy on-the-go snacks? And what the heck is the difference between simple and these complex carbs everyone keeps going on about? So, beverage. In my opinion, sugary drinks are the easiest start to change. They are full of empty calories by which they don't fill you up so you're more inclined to overeat past your daily estimated energy requirements and that can lead to weight gain. In my opinion, zero sugar drinks are great substitutes. My favorites are Coke Zero and this Sugar Free Monster. If you're not a fan of artificial sweeteners, Uvi or Ovi or whatever you like to call it, this one here is great. A coconut water is also really great. And sparkling O. You can get all of these in the supermarket. But also I've got pretty good with alcohol if that's your thing. Uh, whatever, not condoning it, but you know. The second thing is for those who are having muesli as breakfast, try switching it up to oats. This Hubbard's muesli has 14.2 grams of sugar per serve, whereas these oats have 0.4 grams of sugar per serve. Muesli is surprisingly not that good for weight loss, and I learned that the hard and long way. Third tip is take your sugar out your damn tea and coffee. If you've already done this, then yell on to it. If you can't bear to take it out of your tea and coffee, switch tea to the fruity teas and you don't need milk or sugar with those. Or you could try putting your instant coffee in your porridge or smoothie. I've actually done that and it's great. Especially the caramel infused one. Or you could just cut it out of your life. You don't need to do that. That's, that's silly, that's nonsense to do that. Added sugar is a big no-no when trying to reduce your sugar intake. Four, another tip is switch some of your fruit for some veggies. In general, veggies have a lot lower sugar content than fruit. For example, an apple has about 10 grams of sugar per 100 grams, whereas capsicum has 5 grams of sugar per 100 grams. Or a banana has 12 grams of sugar per 100 grams of banana, whereas celery Celery only has 1.8 grams of sugar per 100 grams. Who would have known? Finally, I just want to mention that honey is not the answer. Honey does not contain any more nutrients than sucrose, which is just table sugar. So it's not a more healthful choice than sugar. In fact, per teaspoon or tablespoon, honey has more calories or energy, however you like to call it, than sugar. And that is because the crystals in the sugar on a teaspoon actually takes up more space than the sugar in honey. So a teaspoon of sugar has less calories than a teaspoon of honey. Who would have known? Now there's another question here about carbohydrate substitutes. For those who don't know, Carbohydrates are in fact sugar. Sugar, carbohydrates. That blew my mind when I found that out. So that means vegetables, fruit, bread, rice, chocolate, all of those are carbohydrates and are therefore sugar. So leading on from telling you that honey is not always a good substitute for sugar, I will cover sweetness substitutes as well as kind of the common carb substitutes like rice and bread and, and such. First of all, protein powder is a great substitute for sweetener. Yes, it will be higher in calories than let's say a teaspoon of sugar, but it will reduce your sugar intake if that's the overall goal. One scoop of protein powder is about 120 calories 
and one banana is also about 120 calories if not maybe higher if it's a decent size so instead of putting a banana in your smoothie or porridge take it out and put a scoop of protein powder in and that way you will reduce your sugar intake and increase your protein which is great also it means you can have whatever flavor you want instead of just banana all the time or blueberries or whatever you can normally put in now for common carb replacements cauliflower cauliflower is still considered a carb but it is way lower in carbohydrates than rice and it can actually be used instead of rice believe it or not it's called cauliflower rice if you have a food processor you break cauliflower up into florets chuck it in blend it up till it starts looking like grains of rice chuck it in a bowl in the microwave heat it up and voila you have cauliflower rice kind of leaves a pungent smell to be honest but it tastes amazing and it is so low in calories that brings me to another point colorful veggies not potatoes are a great way to lower your carbohydrate intake you can use them to replace bulky carbs like rice or bread or if you like salads, you are blessed. And you can just bulk out your meals with leafy green vegetables. But if you're like me and you can't stand the damn thing, you can just have stir fries. But instead of using loads and loads of rice, you can fill it out with more veggies and just put half the amount of rice or no rice. This is a great low calorie source to put in stir fries, by the way. And I hate oysters, but trust me, Oyster sauce does not taste like oysters, like I once thought. Finally, another good carbohydrate substitute is lettuce instead of burger buns. It actually works. Look, it's kind of cute, really. I heard you can even get these at Burger Field. Now there's no excuse to eat junk while you're out. So once you've cut out all the sugar from your life, we need to be prepared for these wicked sugar cravings sugar cravings we all get them especially when we're new to dieting or we're trying to kick a sugar addiction in the ass i must admit i was once a sugarholic and the first step to recovery was admitting it to myself no 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 but i'm serious that rush of desperation for something sweet is nothing but a test by the devil but it does pass and the biggest thing you can do is trust that and know that they will pass so instead of telling you to put a little tiny bit of cocoa in your smoothie or dates or blueberries which don't even do anything i'm going to give you some actions that you can take to take control of the sugar devil so here's a two-step process of which works for me. It might sound a little bit crazy, but to be honest, if this works for you, then I'm gonna be so happy I mentioned it. Firstly, I aim to keep sugar out of reach. If you have family members or flatmates that have a lot of sugary foods in the house, then make your own shelf in the fridge and in the pantry that's dedicated to you and make that a sugar-free zone. That way, if you do get a sugar craving, you're going to have to go out of your way to travel to the supermarket or the dairy to get that forbidden treat. So, once you've done that, the second step is when that time comes around. And I'm ready to make the journey to move and pick. I do what we all do best. Procrastinate. I tell myself, yeah, I'll get that ice cream right after I vacuum. And so I vacuum the whole house and then I tell myself after I've vacuumed, oh, no, 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 I'll get that ice cream after dinner. I have dinner and then it's, no, 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 I'll get that ice cream after I do the dishes and I do the dishes. Then I'll get that ice cream after I have my shower or maybe go to the gym, go for a walk read a book, catch up with a friend, reply to emails. I tell myself I am eventually gonna get that ice cream, but I lied. 
I lied to myself just like that little devil on my shoulder told me I needed that salted caramel ice cream with the Russian fudge pieces drivel and chocolate sauce on a crunchy waffle cone. Damn sugar devil. And this is when you tell yourself, I'll get it later. But you don't. And soon enough the craving would have passed and you have like a super clean house or you've learned something new, made a new friend or whatever y'all do when you procrastinate. Another great trick that I used that helped me kick my sugar addiction in the ass was the hardest thing of all. And it sounds a little crazy again, but I throw the food away. When I decide to start a diet, I gather all my accumulated junk food that is built up at the back of the pantry and I bet it, throw it away. I don't give it to someone else and watch them feed their mouths with it. Nuh uh, not in front of me. I throw it away. Throw it. It gives me so much strength over my diet. I feel so in control. When I throw my food away, I'm telling myself, I don't want that. I don't need that. But if I just tell myself, no, you can't have that, even though it's sitting in the pantry staring at you till you're blue in the face, that is so tempting. Saying that you can't have something makes you want it even more. But when you tell yourself you don't want it and you throw it away because you don't want that in your house, you are too good to feed your body with that junk. It gives you strength. It's a great way to start a diet. And I know this might sound like a waste of yummy, good resources, but to be honest, no one really needs that junk anyway. It's not a big meal that could feed someone up. It's just empty calories, just gonna rot your teeth, go to your thighs, do the nasty, you just don't want that in your life or anyone else's life, okay? Not when you're dieting. Do us all a favor and throw away that Sunday. Good riddance to Mrs. Higgins. Big on whipped cream and jam covered scum. So this brings us to healthy on the go snacks. Most people who know me know that I am a big fan of protein bars because they're damn good. They're easy, yummy, and I freaking love them and they have amazing macros. Macro stands for macronutrients, which is really just referring to the ratio of fats, carbs, and protein. I have tried many bars in my day, and here are some of my favorites. First of all, my absolute favorite right now is these My Bars. My favorite is the ice cream cookie or the peanut butter flavor. I also really like Power Crunch Bars. My favorite is the caramel or the white chocolate. Also, Fit Joy, but I've only tried the chocolate raspberry truffle and that was amazing so I can definitely recommend that. If you don't have protein bars, meal prepping is a really good way to make sure that you've got food ready on the go. Even if it's just chopping up some capsicum or celery or whatever you like in a bowl. Capsicum's actually really good. Or of course you can have fruit like bananas and apple on the bench so if you're running out of the house and need to grab something you can grab an apple or whatever. But veggies are a good option. So you can chop these up, put them in a little airtight container, chuck them in the fridge. You can do them on Sunday night and you can do like five lots and five little containers. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Easy as that. Also, another snack I do at uni is I make a protein pancake. So that's just a banana, two egg whites, quarter cup of oats, and maybe like a tablespoon of protein powder, but that's optional. I blend it all up, put it on a nonstick pan, no oil, cook it up, and then I cut it into little bite-sized pieces and put it in a container. And then when I'm at uni, it's almost like a substitute for crackers or chips or something. It's a nice little bite-sized snack and it's good for you. But I mean, on-the-go snacks with no preparation, my ultimate go-to is just protein bars. They're in a wrapper, not messy, they taste flippin' good, and they have good macros. So, now is the question about simple versus complex carbohydrates. 
simple carbs contain one or two molecules whereas complex carbs contain hundreds to thousands of molecules so complex carbs take longer for your body to break them down this means that complex carbohydrates cause a slower release of sugar into your blood now there are certain hormones that are released depending on whether you have had a carbohydrate meal, sugary meal recently, or if you haven't had sugar or carbs in a while. I will do a, another vlog more in depth on this topic later on this summer for those who are interested. So simple and complex carbs can somewhat influence these hormone secretions. And these hormones, in particular insulin and glucagon, they can actually affect how fast and how slowly your body will gain weight or lose weight. So examples of complex carbohydrates are things like brown rice, brown bread, fruit and vegetables, whole grain oats instead of the real refined oats. Believe it or not, there are different types of oats out there and the ones that um, normally I find are in the little sachets, you put them in the microwave for a little amount of time and they go real smooth and creamy and they taste real good. Those ones have been processed a lot more. I'm sure they will still be considered as complex carbs because they are oats, but they will be less complex because they will be more processed and broken down already for you. So your body will find it easier to digest, which is bad because then that means a bigger rush of glucose will go into your blood quicker and release more insulin which is not always the best for weight loss and for health because it can lead to diabetes type 2 which you know we want to avoid that if we can simple carbohydrates they refer to white rice white bread lollies added sugars processed foods because when they've been processed they've been broken down in the process and they've been refined so that makes it easier for your body to digest it which can cause a quicker release of sugar into the blood which we want to avoid if we can so yeah that's probably the main idea the difference between simple and complex is that simple is easy to break down and can cause a larger blood glucose spike than complex carbohydrates of which take a longer time for your body to break down and will release smaller amounts of sugar into your blood and that will ultimately affect the hormones that deal with that blood glucose level and they can in turn affect how fast or slow you lose weight or gain weight. So stick to complex carbs if you can because those are a more healthful option compared to simple. So yeah, have your whole grain, unprocessed foods, brown rice, brown bread and fruit and veggies. That's where your carbohydrate source should ideally come from. So thank you for the question. I really hope that what I've said has helped in some sort of way. Everyone is different. My advice is just from what worked for me. I really hope it can work for you too. My ideas about sugar cravings are quite different to what people do, but it worked for me and I had never heard those tips before. I just tried it myself. I played around with it and it worked for me. So give it a go and let me know. Please contact me if this works for you or if it doesn't work for you as well because it's interesting to hear some feedback. So yeah, make sure you contact me on my Instagram. It's Brooke Misfit. And good luck and enjoy the rest of your jump boot camp. <laughs>